The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio, brought to you by IANS, the International Association for Near-Death near Studies. I'm your host, Lee Whitting. Today's guest, the Reverend Catherine Peretti, has an amazing story to tell about her near-death experience, which I first heard about in a film made by Timothy O'Reilly titled Round Trip. It's an excellent film, interviews uh, with several experiencers, by the way, and I, I would certainly recommend it, along with our NDE radio conversation with Tim back on January 25th of 2016, which you'll find under past shows on our website. Reverend Catherine Peretti is a clairvoyant, spiritual counselor, healer, medium, teacher, and life coach. Catherine's life was riddled with illness and, after being given six months to live, had an NDE and was gone for five minutes. Upon her return, she was healed, and even though she had been clairvoyant since the age of five, her gifts became more intense, and Catherine discovered a healing ability, knowledge, and wisdom that was to aid her in her work. During her NDE, she saw herself being ordained, and on August 12, 2000, this vision was fulfilled as Catherine was ordained as an interfaith minister. Catherine has written two books, Just Be and The Perfection of Being, that she was guided to write, and she lives in Manhattan. Reverend Peretti, welcome to NDE Radio. Hi, Lee. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. Uh, Catherine, in round trip, you said you were very ill prior to your near-death experience. Tell us, uh, if you would, what happened to you. Well, well, it's a very long, complicated story, so I'll try to make it as simple as possible. I just had an accident, a freak accident, um, and it crossed four vertebrae, and it, it left me with a contusion on the left side of the brain. And other neurological things were going on one after another after another. And so I had surgery on my spine and it was, um, it was worse than they had previously thought. And so I was in the hospital, um, a year. And during that time, after the first surgery, then um, they had to do another surgery. So it was one thing after the other, after the other. And slowly, neurologically, my body broke down. So mm -hmm. that um, I, they, they said it was like my spine was absolutely, um, you know, things that you plug in like a switchboard. So everything was plugged in in the wrong Way so you would touch my foot, my head would shake. It was all kinds of crazy, crazy things happening. Doctors weren't understanding what was going on, and this was going on for over a period of nine years, in and out uh, of hospitals, wheelchairs. It was craziness. Wow, and what a nightmare! Well, it was a nightmare. Yeah. What What was uh, what actually uh, triggered the NDE? Um. And they finally, finally, everything broke down. So my kidneys broke down. My my eyes, I had the erosion of the nerve endings in my eyes. I had uh, my left ear. I couldn't hear. <clears throat> Excuse me. My kidneys, everything was breaking down. So they told my parents that I had six months to live. They meaning the doctors. So that was in August, and then in October, the last uh, Wednesday of October, it was in 1975, I just closed my eyes, and I just saw this amazing light, and I just went up, and there was music, and, and that was it. And um, then I had this amazing, amazing experience, mm -hmm. and... When, now, it, it, in the film, you uh, you said that you uh, saw angels in the room and you heard something that like Gregorian chant music. Yes, I did. I heard angels in the room, Gregorian chant music. Uh, it was like the whole roof 
throw off the top of, of um, the place. Everything was going on. It was totally unreal. Mm. Did you feel yourself leave your body at that point? Um, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And then you went into the light from there? Um, I felt myself, you know, this is New York. I have to tell you, just Lee, um, nobody ever comes and knocks at my door. And then uh-huh. somebody just did. So, you know, I have to say, do I know to take over? I'm sorry. <laughs> I really am. Um, anyway, uh, so, yeah, uh, there were, okay, let me go back. I just left my body. First of all, there was a, uh, a tremendous light in the room. And it was as if, then I heard music, and I, I felt nine angels in the room, which mm. later on I realized was completion. <laughs> and then that's in numerology, nine is completion. And yes. then it was just like the light was beaming, and the music was going, and I just released, and my soul just went up. And as I looked down on the hospital bed, I saw this little person, I was probably about 80-something pounds and only could wear children's clothes. And it, it was it didn't matter, and I went straight, 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 straight up. And I realized that the where I landed, I felt like I was on at the right hand of God. And I saw this lady that I'd been seeing since I was five years old who who turned out to be you know, the Blessed Mary, and um, it was so intense, and it, it was totally unreal. And then I, I saw other, other I saw my, I passed my grandfather as I was just going straight up, and mm-hmm. I passed others that I, you know, I knew. And then I saw, it, it become like an energy, a light being, and there's an intensity of love and peace and joy and wholeness that it was so unreal. Um, and then there, you know, I grew up Catholic, and yes. I always had a very strong faith, um, but yet I always knew that there was more to life in this world and that there was only one God and that God, you know, religion separated people. And so I always questioned that. And uh, that's why I believe I became an interfaith minister. But going back to the near death, I was in energy and um, I was shown all of this. I was shown my life as a little girl. Leaning in front of a sta- uh, uh, praying in front of the statue of Our Lady, and I came home and the mother, the statue moved and and put her hands on my head, and she didn't say anything. And I I just felt after a while, when you're a child and you're clairvoyant and you're having all these experiences, after a while you feel like, well, you know, not everybody is like you, so you become more introverted and you don't talk about these things. But then yes. I passed over. I saw all of the things that happened to me when I was growing up and I knew that was, you know, that was truth. Uh, it's a kind of weird situation where you really know this, but because you cannot speak about it, um, you begin to wonder um, you know, if if this is real. But mm. it, but dying is it was the most uh beautiful, uh real, honest um, I don't it it's something that you cannot explain because it's just so intense. Mm. And and the lady spoke to me and then I saw the uh, I saw my Saying all of this, this is okay to say. I'm, yes. I saw it. I saw Jesus' face, um, and then it, it, it was like oh, his 
his eyes kept changing color and kept changing, um, like almond eyes and then smaller eyes and then, but all knowing. And you, you, when you were there, you felt like that this was the greatest world, and anybody or anything could happen. And sure. Then I did was did Mary did Mary or Jesus say anything to you? Oh yes. Um, and then uh, besides that, I saw what I was told was the little flower, which is St. Teresa, who yes. also said to me. And then Santa Lucia for the eyes, she put her hands on my eye, it, but one hand on, on my eyes in the front, the other hand on my head in the back, and then she put her hands on my third eye. And then she would, she, you know, it was like you now received a gift of all wisdom. And then Mary, <clears throat> Mary said to me, "I've been with you since you were a, a, a babe, a little one, and you uh, are gifted, and you need to go back." And then Jesus said, "You need to go back. There are things that you need to do." And I said. I choose not to go back, and then they said, you must go back. And I, then they showed me what I would be doing, or they showed me me walking on white rose petals, and um, I was walking on, with a robe on, with a hood, down an aisle, and people on each side of me were either in wheelchairs and hospitals little beds or mentally not correct and all of a sudden as I walked past they would stand up and they would walk and so on and then I I was walking towards this symbol and the symbol was like a tapestry of mm -hmm. every religion that ever was and um, it was that was intense and years later um, i I was ordained, uh, I was taught by a rabbi in a Buddhist temple and ordained in a Catholic church, ordained by all these interfaith ministers, a Catholic priest, a rabbi, and as I was walking down the aisle, there was all white flowers all around, and I walked towards the altar, and there was the tapestry, and so... It was really unbelievable. And so your your impression then, Catherine, was that religion is not a bad thing, but that all religions have something good to offer. Oh, my God, sure. Every, every religion has something that is essential. Um, there is a truth, um, a, a, you know, a thread of truth that, is is truth is truth is truth no matter how it's said no matter who who says it so no I believe in religion <clears throat> losing my voice excuse me <laughs> I believe in religion and I believe in its importance for discipline and to teach children uh, that there's something much greater than what is here on the physical plane mm. and how <clears throat> But I also teach spirituality, which is all religion. It's, 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 there's a God. There is a universal equation. Um, all things are possible. Uh, how to get in touch with your own being so that you can change yourself and make your life better. So uh, a, a personal mystical experience, which... Um, doesn't necessarily involve a religion works as well as uh, being a Buddhist or a Catholic? I believe so. I oh. believe so. I mean, I, uh, uh, don't get me wrong, my faith was so strong since I was a child. I mean, I did crazy things like when I was eight years old, I ran around the house saying I was a kahuna. Um, I, I, my mother just looked at me oh, like, I need to... Um, uh, to study the Kabbalah again. And here I was, <laughs> a, a little Catholic child, 
you know, brought up in a Catholic school in a Catholic house, a Northern Italian family. And mm. so I knew when I was little that there was more. I, I, I believed in past lives. I told my mother that um, I, I took Jesus off the cross and I, I put him, he didn't belong on the cross being crucified and hurt. So he became my friend. So I took him off the cross and he was my brother and I walked with him. So things nice. like that. Um, I have this faith that when I was so ill, um, and the doctor said I would not walk, talk, see, hear, or ever be whole. I told him that I would because I have the faith and I know that this would happen. Faith. Now, what, oh, no, I was going to say, uh, what was it like now um, when you were told, Jesus told you you had to come back? What was it like coming back into your body? Oh, boy. Um, that was like like a like a swift sound you just go woof and then you open your eyes and you're there and uh i got off the hospital bed and walked and it, it, like nothing like nothing happened and there were two people in the room at the time and one of them was brought up jewish and he said i saw jesus and and he said uh, and, and I looked at him and I said, that's good, I'm glad. And I, <laughs> I walked and, and they looked at me like, what? I was still, I mean, very thin and I had to, uh, you know, to build my body up and get strong. But I was walking and I could see here, I, everything was working. <laughs> wow. And the doctor, so this was, this was a, were you totally healed then? Totally, like instantly, instantly. Wow. And then I had a smaller and uh, near-death experience uh, in 1981 when um, I was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, and I was taken to uh, by ambulance to New York Hospital, and I had uh, another NDA which they could not get me back and they did not know what was going on with me and I did come back and it took many years for me to get strong because Guillain-Barre syndrome is an, a, a disease that um, all the muscles are are gone and the, the coating of the nerves called the myla disintegrates so you're raw so if you have uh, like a raw gum or a tooth in your mouth, my whole head, my toes was all raw like that. And that That's... was shown to me to be two different ways of coming back. One instantly and one hard work to do. Do you remember anything about the second NDE? Did you have a vision of the other side? I, 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 I started going up again, up, 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 and I had a vision and I was pushed down. Just mm. like that, pushed down, and I said, "Okay, all right, I, I, I will obey what as this is. I will obey." And it took a while to get back. Now you you had uh, some psychic gifts even as a child, but when you came back, uh, according to um, uh, Round Trip, you your um, abilities were greatly enhanced. Tell us a little about the, those gifts. Oh, sure. Um, I always, when I was little, I like I said, I saw this lady and she was always my guide and she would talk to me and I would, I would, I, I knew a, a lot of things. I just knew a lot of things. I, I used to go into a crystal cave, which I called my little crystal cave and was taught and, and by this um, a wise man, uh, and later on I found out he was a great um, uh, mystical Indian uh, healer um, called Hazor. I had no idea. Anyway, and I would say to my mother things like, um, um, you know, Grandpa is going to die, or, or my uncle was, was dying, and she would say, 
and then it would happen. So I, I just kept quiet. And, um, but then after the near death, after the NDE, I, I, I was, it was wild. I just knew things. I just, uh, more than it just like blossomed. And I, I could teach. I mean, uh, I could go and start to talk about books and uh, uh, things that I've never read. And people would say, well, did you read that? You could have written this book or that book. I said, no. And then uh, one instance was, uh, this is what was really freaked me out a little. My friend had um, surgery on her mouth, and her mouth was packed with a lot of sores and, and it was blood and so on. So I was told to go over to her and put my hands on her face. And I did, and instantly it was healed. And her dentist was amazed and desired to know who how this happened. And then I just went into the background because Lee at the time, I felt that, this was a gift that I needed to use with integrity and with dignity, and this was not a circus act, and I, I chose not to be known that way. So I started to do healings on people that were, were ill, and then I realized that <clears throat> there are certain times people choose not to get better, and that even though I desired for them to be well, it was not my choice. That was a great lesson for me. Mm-hmm. And I continued to do that, and then I continued to go to um, hospitals to, to talk about um, what it's like on the other side for patients that were dying. And um, then I kind of was doing it a lot. And I truly felt that it was taking too much energy from me. And I had been so ill for so long that I had to uh, really stop doing that. So I realized that when I do a session, a clairvoyant reading, there's a healing that does take place at all times. Had many instances where people say, "I left you and I was healed." Um, mm. So I choose to listen. If I'm told, "Get up, Catherine, and put your hands on on a person," I do. Uh, it, but in other instances, it's just what I say and whatever the energy that um, takes place between us heals. Do you also uh, minister at a church, or do you do um, any sort of uh, regular services? I don't do regular services, no. I do weddings. I teach individually. I do. I have psychiatrists that send me clients, too. I do spiritual counseling because I feel that um, it's important to get in touch with your soul. It's important to understand the spiritual world and how that works. It's important to change the way you think, the way that you, um, uh, 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 the words you say, because you manifest certain things and you create your own life. And this is how I help others to, 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 to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been I've done workshops, or I've had certain people, a, a, a small group here where I teach, um, but I usually do individual. I do phone sessions. I do sessions in my home. I do Skype sessions. I, I've even done phone sessions in Fiji. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it, Italy, Paris, Fiji, it doesn't matter where you are. Mm. You said in the film that uh, at one time you felt religion separated people, but now you feel that everything, all is one, I th- all is one now, I think is the way you put it. Um, well, yeah. 
Uh, and yet, uh, in the world, of course, we've got religious wars going on all the time between yeah. Islam and, you know, well, you know. <laughs> How can we, what do you think about that? How can we overcome those, um, uh, my religion is the only religion type of thinking? That's an ego. That's all ego. Um, it's not really spiritually. It, they're not, they're not, um, acting in a way that, that is blessed, or they're not acting in a way that is, uh, they put it in the name of God. Um, we all have our choices to be light or be dark, and the darkness I call fear, and the light I call God. <laughs> and mm. it's interesting how people get confused and they blame God for certain things, or uh, it, it goes back in time when the Christians were fed to the lions. It, it goes back, and, and it, it's cyclical. And we, we, we all really, really, really need to remain in the light and remain clear. And um, not that you need to pray a certain prayer, but you can speak to God, and you can speak to Mary, you can speak, I mean, and, and, and just a way, dear, dear Lord, help me to manifest light and to bring mm. understanding and greatness to this world. Help me to sustain myself so that I can be a light and teach others to help them increase their light uh, and their understanding of who they are and, and to receive respect other people. There's lack of respect in this world for humanity, for for all beings. And we need to get the respect and love back. We, hey, Catherine, we have just a couple minutes left. I wonder if you could tell uh, our listeners about your two books, Just Be and The Perfection of Being. Okay. Um, many years ago, I was guided to, after all of the the World Trade Center, the tsunamis, and so on, I was guided to write a book called The Perfection of Being, which is all poems and prayers and um, that, that the world needed inspiration and, and, you know, that people were down and depressed with all the chaos and all that was going on. So I, I did write that. And then I was also guided to write a little book called The Bus Mold Book. Very simplistic, very easy to read. Um, I always decided to write books that people could carry with them, open up the page and feel better. And Just Be is also poetry in the beginning and then prose, but some instances in my life that, um, uh, you know, and what ha happened to me uh, as a child. It's very simplistic and two little books. Um, mm. They're being printed again, and uh, we're uh, working to get them on Amazon. Oh, good. Yeah. You, you must be familiar with Ram Dass's Be Here Now. Be Here Now. Um, uh, yes, I am. Um, yeah, it's it's a that's a book that was very influential uh on me many many years ago and it, it's amazing yeah. how stating what is uh, essentially oh you know, it's it should be obvious is so powerful in somebody's life we we let our lives get so complex and detail ridden that we lose track of of um, the essential truth. Yeah. Um that's so true because not many people are able to stay in the present, and there's too much drama going on, um, and God is simplistic, and so we need to stay in the present and be grateful. Out of great, grateful and appreciation are the two things that are so necessary. Mm. Catherine, do you have a, a w website? Uh, if people yeah. wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do it? Okay, website is www.revcatherine.com. And, and that's Catherine with a C. C-A-T-H-E-R 
I-N-E, dot com. Yeah. And then my phone number is 212-249-7191. Everything should be on the website also. Thank you so much, Catherine. Oh. We are out of time, and but but I want to thank our guest, the Reverend Catherine Peretti, for giving us this amazing story of her NDE and how it healed her and led her to healing others, and as as well as about the writing of her two books. If you'd like to listen again to this or any of our past shows, just go to our website at nderadio.org. And for more information about the work of IANS and our upcoming conference in July in Orlando, Florida, check out their website, iands.org. And tune in next Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern for more NDE Radio. This is Lee Whitting saying thanks for listening.